uh, Kevin Costner, who is the show's patriarch and the central character of the show, John Dutton. He is the uh, Tony Soprano of Montana, essentially. <laughs> and he is gone. And we know he's yeah. gone based on it was a very public falling out with him and this creator, Taylor Sheridan, who's now like Paramount's poster child. Like he does every major show on Paramount is show run by Taylor Sheridan. It's Yellowstone, 1923, Mayor of Kingstown, Lioness, uh, Bass Reeves. Like everything is Taylor Sheridan. And they had um, a creative disagreement. They had a financial disagreement and Costner did not return for season five, part two. And so everybody knew that his character of John was going to die. We were just kind of waiting to see what would happen and how they addressed it. Mm -hmm. And they do within the first, as, as soon as the show it's opens. It's the first scene. It's like uh, police cars everywhere outside of like the big home or not the ranch home, but like his, uh, what is he, the mayor? Yes, he's the mayor the of Montana like, at this point. Yeah. Like home, there's police tape everywhere, um, like crime scene stuff. And so you know. Every right away you're like, Oh my god, he died already? Like we were going right into this. Yeah. Um, which I guess we could talk about like how did you feel about them starting off right away with that? Well, I think that the hard thing with it is that there's no perfect way to do this. No. When something like this happens. Um for me, I mean, it's we talked about it a little bit before we started recording. Kevin Costner to me was so much of a part of what the show was and why it was successful. Um, like I remember when this show first debuted, my grandmother, who's no longer with us, but she was a huge fan of Kevin Costner, like loved him as an actor, and the appeal of wanting to see this, and this was kind of in the time where it was like right before all the streamers started like hitting their strides and things. But all the cable networks were trying their hand at like scripted dramas. Mm. And Paramount Network was a new channel. It was originally Spike TV and Paramount. That's literally what the channel was. And then Paramount owned it and they turned it into this prestige drama network. And Yellowstone was the first show they came out with. And it was did like gangbusters. Like everybody loved the show. And Costner was nominated for two Emmys for the show. So losing his character in general was going to be something that was going to be hard for a lot of people. But there's still a lot of appeal to the show. People love Beth and Rip. Um, some people are into the cowboy culture that the show kind of represents and brings upon itself and the politics that come with it. But for me, as soon as it happens, you already feel – and when you go throughout the episode, there's like a deflating feeling of like something feels off about this. Um, and it's obvious because they have to continue mm -hmm. with the show. It's so popular. And they can't just end it with no John. And they obviously didn't want to pay or they didn't want to go about it. However, they were going to go about it with Costner. But for me, the way they handled it, I think, was the best that they could have. Like, there's no other way they could have done it. But I'm just upset. And I think the quality of the show has dipped over the last few seasons. And I do think that Costner has been one of those consistencies throughout even the low points of the show because he's such a high quality actor. Mm. So not having him felt off to me. Um, the scene itself is fine. I think it plays exactly how it's supposed to. Um, I like the, I like that we're getting it from the children's point of view um, with, with Casey and Beth. I think that's really, it's, it's intriguing to see what's going to happen. And then we know, which it's alluded to based on what happens at the end of part one of season five, that Jamie is is behind what occurs. So for me, it was it was handled as well as it could be, but I'm 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 already missing John Dutton, and we're one episode in. So I don't know how to feel about it. What about you? I have a very more positive tone about it. Okay. I was really happy that they started it off this way and just kind of ripped the band-aid off and was like, we're throwing the audience back into the drama. I do think that was smart. Seated. They had to they had to get it out of the way quickly because yeah. if not, it was gonna kind of like Lop linger around. over yeah. the episode the whole entire time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, also it's like the part one ended on such a boring tone of just like, they didn't have any solid ending. Everybody was just kind of like, Oh, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do this now. I'm doing here. Like, see you guys later. Um, and so if they did that, like meandering feeling again, I think people would have really just been like, Oh God, this is going to suck. But I, I was really excited. I was interested. Obviously, I think people do know kind of like where it's going to go, but I think that the acting in that first episode was killer. Um, 
which I think is a testament to Yellowstone. The writing, I guess, could dip a little bit, but I think that they just have a strong cast that know who their characters are and are able to deliver interesting and powerful performances, which makes people still love them. I think that that's a really fair take because I think that the biggest thing for me was the writing. Mm -hmm. I think that the writing is constantly dipping and I think it's just getting worse. But I do agree with you. I think that these people, these actors have played these characters now for such a long time yeah. that they completely are aware of exactly not only who they are as as their characters, but full, like they probably know their characters better than any of these directors that are coming in to do this. Because 100%. Taylor Sheridan's not directing all of these episodes. You're having different directors come in every single season now with a show that's been lasting for years. Mm -hmm. And there was so much discussion based on how they were going to do this because there was also a pretty big gap between part one and part two well premiere wise it was five, two years which is crazy it's crazy that's for the same season that's crazy it's wild and i think that part of me almost wishes though like that's why i'm like if you were gonna wait that long you should have just waited for costner and you should have just ended it the way it should have been. I'm fine what do, with this what character. What do you mean waited for him? What, like, what I think that if there was a way they could have worked it out where even, because I think we have to, I want to fact check this, but you had said before we started recording, you, you're pretty sure that part two is like a shorter half of the season. I'm pretty sure because, so this was technically season five, episode nine. nine. Yes. Because it's, it's season five, part B. Yeah. Yeah. But I, mean, I can't picture them doing like 11, epi like making this a 20 well, it, episode season. If they were going to keep it even from from um the first half of the season, they would have to do eight episodes. And this is episode one. So I could see them doing eight episodes. But for me, it's like I wish then even, even if you did it in, in a way where it's like, oh, let's bring let's bring John back for three or four episodes. No, I think that it's a total. Honestly, I think that it was like sticking it to him of being like, fine, you don't want to be a part of this. Fuck you. You're dead in the first five minutes. Literally, I think they didn't want anything to do with him because why would they want? And it's not like personal. It's just why would they want an actor and I a team understand. member on that team if they're not 100 percent giving their all when everybody else is? I do. And he's probably the biggest name making the biggest amount yeah. out of everybody. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. But I don't know. It's I'm 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 more interested on where they're going to be able to go, because I think that the thing is, is and you had talked about this, I think, just a minute ago where you're like, I think we can all see where things are going. And it's like, that's what I don't like about it. I like I don't like that. It's way too predictable. And I think that though the show is simple in its tone and the mm -hmm. way that it is like being addressed is it's a cable drama at the end of the day. Like that's well, what I it mean, is. I don't know exactly where it's going, but I think that there's key points. Like now it's established that Beth's storyline is going to be getting revenge and ruining Jamie. Yeah. Either both like literally ruining him or just like, like who knows? But then there's the whole other storyline of the um, pipeline that I think is all of a sudden going to come way back into play. And that's going to kind of be more of the storyline for Rip and Casey. Yeah. Because they're now the, they're handling the ranch completely. Yeah, exactly. And so I think that they're really going to have to get more involved in the politics of it. So I don't know. I think that it's kind of just picking up the story exactly where they left off just without Costner.